Praise God. Uh, welcome, God's people, to our Friday night. Stay connected. Um, I'm just excited to be able to be able to share uh, even a brief word with, with the body of Christ. I've missed you all greatly, and God has continued to cover us and keep us. Uh, we're doing great. We're our health is at 100%, and and we're very excited to to just go forward and serve God alongside with you. Uh, so this word that God's given me, I just uh, like you just to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter five. It's two verses. These two verses are in verses fourteen. Uh, excuse me, fourteen through sixteen. <laughs> My math might not be as good, but praise God. But the word of God says in in Matthew. Chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine, <clears throat> excuse me, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Praise God. It's a beautiful scripture. And we know that these are the words of Jesus Christ. We've heard them. We've read them. We've walked in them. But we also remember that Jesus, when he was here, it says in John chapter 9, verse 5, Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But see, now that he has gone home, that he is at the right hand of the Father, that his word tells us, and he throughout his ministry told us, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will be the one to carry us through because the Holy Spirit will remind us of the things of Christ. And that's what he was called to do. So as we look at these things, we see the word of God says that you, you and I are the light of the world. As believers, we're the light of the world. And a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. This light can't be hidden. This light that we are cannot be hidden. It says in verse 15, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. They do not light a lamp and hide it. They don't light a lamp in order for it to give light and then cover it. It says that they but they put it on a lampstand that it gives light to all who are in the house. Everyone in the area receives light from that lamp. How does a lamp work? The lamp that they were referring to was a lamp that was filled with oil. This oil is the presence of the Holy Spirit. We as believers filled with the Holy Spirit, serving the Lord are lights to this world. And the word of God tells us that we should be put on a lampstand. You know that in Revelations uh, chapter 1, it, that it speaks about uh, Jesus sharing, and this was uh, John, the apostle, who wrote this. But the Word of God says, Revelations is actually, Revelation is actually the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's an understanding of who Jesus is. And it says that he would be walking through the midst of the golden lampstands. And this is in Revelations chapter 2, uh, verse 1, that he would be walking in the midst of these lampstands. Well, in Revelations 1, verse 20, it says that the lampstands are the churches, the seven churches specifically that he's talking about. But he called the church a lampstand. See, the church is the lampstand that holds the lamp, that is filled with the Holy Spirit. That's you and I. We are the church. We're the body of Christ. God has called us by his Holy Spirit that he's filled us and given us the ability to shine bright. When does a lampstand shine bright? In the darkest days. We are in some dark days. But God has called us as a church to come together as one tool in God's hand to be used to shine bright by the power of the Holy Spirit that's within us. There is churches that are not spirit-filled, that do not have the Holy Spirit, that are preaching a gospel that is not the gospel. They're preaching a gospel of prosperity. They're teaching a gospel of, 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 of self. They're preaching a gospel. There's so many deceptions and distractions. 
But the word of God tells us those of us who have the word of God in our heart. And this is a worldwide church. I'm not just speaking to the rock. I'm speaking to the worldwide church that is a Bible teaching, Holy Spirit filled church that we are called to shine bright and be held up on a lampstand so that God can use us. God has called us to do this in the days that we live in. See, this oil is given us by the Holy Spirit. If we have no oil, a lamp with no oil is useless. It cannot shine. It's just seen from the outside. You can identify it as a lamp during the day, but in dark times, you don't see it. But if it's filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit and it's lit and it's shining bright and it's placed on a lampstand, then it can be used mightily. And what does the scripture say? It says in verse 16, let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. They, this day, more than ever, they need to see good works. Like we spoke about even on, on Wednesday night, the, the new commandment to love, love one another. God has called us to show this love, show these works, even as we come together and shine as a lampstand, shine as a church, shine as one tool in God's hand. God called us all to come together and be a part of that. And I'm so excited to be in the midst of God's people. I wait with a godly excitement even uh, for Sunday morning to come, that God has carried us through this trial, that God has raised us up and has given us a, a good, clean bill of report on our health. And now it's time to serve God together. So in this, I just want to just pray briefly that we would have strength that we would have boldness, that we would have courage in the day that we live in, so that God would use us in a mighty way. So, so let's pray, and, and, and let's just bow our heads and pray right now. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for it as instruction, Lord. And Father, as you look to the lampstands of this world, to the churches, to the body of Christ that is on this earth right now, Father, I pray you give us, Father, strength. You give us courage. Father, you help us to have boldness to go forward. Even when this flesh is fearful, Father, you are greater than our heart. So, Father, you go before us. You guide us and continue to use us as a church. So we just wait, Father, with a godly excitement for all you have for us. Help us, Father, in these days, in these difficult days, Father, these days that bring fear, Lord, these days that bring concern, they bring worry. But, Father, we know your word is true. And we know greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world. So bless us, strengthen us, and be with us. Continue to go before us as a church, even as a worldwide church. Father, bless your people right now. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you guys, people, for being with us tonight. And again, I just wanted to remind you that this Sunday morning, being Father's Day, we're, we're still going to be gathering outdoors. We're going to be gathering under the big tent again, just so that we can social distance a little easier, just because of the even the letter that was, writ, uh, was read that I wrote uh, uh, for you guys last Sunday. And, and just to be able to, to keep the proper distancing here. And, and we know that, that very soon we'll be together inside the building. We know that, that God has that for us. And in boldness, we're going to continue to serve God together. So make it a point to come. Be with us 930 Sunday morning. We'll be in the front parking lot just worshiping God together, just being strengthened and lifted up by his word and just being blessed to see one another together. So praise God. So you have a blessed night. We thank you again for being with us. And as always, remember, God is still on the throne. Praise God.